Living longer, living healthier, living better than ever before. Welcome to Mountain Pacific's Healthy Living for Life, a weekly series that gives you the information, education, and expert insight you need to become an active participant in today's ever-changing healthcare climate. Here now is today's program host. What is considered common healthcare treatments in one culture may not be widely used in another. Here in the United States, many of us stick to what's often called Western medicine. But more and more, some patients are beginning to look for healthcare practices outside Western medicine. Welcome to Healthy Living for Life, a show dedicated to helping you do just that. I'm your host, Beth Brown. Today, we talk about complementary or integrative medicine. What is it? We'll find out right after this. Stay tuned. Welcome back. This morning we're talking with Dr. Jeff Rausch, a naturopathic doctor, and Dr. Jay Larson, a medical doctor, who are here with us to talk about complementary medicine. Thanks for being here, gentlemen. You bet. So Dr. Rausch, let's start with you. You are the owner and medical director at Natural Medicine Plus, where you practice naturopathic medicine. Can you just start by defining what that is? Yeah, so naturopathic medicine, I would say, is a, it's a whole system approach or whole system philosophy around medicine. So it's not I like to tell patients or people that it's not just treatment. Oftentimes patients think that what a naturopath does is just dispense natural remedies and I would say it goes way beyond that. It's, okay. it's really about, um, a part of the philosophy is about encouraging preventative medicine or prevention within health. It's looking at the physiology of the body and trying to correct underlying problems within that physiology. Um, you know, historically and theoretically, um, it would be using things like natural remedies and so forth to achieve that, but I think it's really, you know, over time and the evolution of the practice and profession, it's grown way beyond that. Okay. So we use things like natural, you need to use things like herbal medicine or supplementation, um, manipulation, physical medicine, but we also use med uh, conventional medicines when needed as well. Okay, and that's perfect because what we're talking about today is complementary or integrative health. So can you explain what that is? You know, so I would say that complementary medicine is probably a little bit defined a little bit differently than alternative medicine by definition. You know, complementary medicine would be using your medicine to well complement another form of medicine. So, you know, an example would be with Dr. Larson, if he and I would be co-managing a patient, he would be using his methods of treatment and I might be encouraging my methods and working together so that would be complementary and there's other models within our healthcare system um, that um, are well are models for that and I would say alternative medicine is is something different it would be using a, a would be using an alternative approach for a same problem but would be completely different approach than let's say something that a medical doctor might offer Okay. So it's, I think it's either working in conjunction with or separate from in okay. terms of that definition. Are there a lot of people that use complementary medicine? You know, I would say more and more people. I know that in my practice we get, we get, a, we get many people who come in for regular care, but we also get people who come in because they've, they've seen a, a, conventional, a conventional provider, a medical doctor, and they might be looking for a different answer or they might be looking for a way to maybe improve the efficacy of the care that they're already getting um, or might be just looking for some other solutions or ways to approach a problem. Okay, so it sounds like complementary medicine still involves a medical doctor. So Dr. Larson, can we talk a little bit about how a patient might use a complementary medicine approach to their health care? Sure. Uh, kind of depends on what their underlying health belief system is. There are times where despite all their best treatments in traditional medicine, we cannot um, improve the symptoms that the patient has been having for such a long time. Pain is often one of the difficult uh, uh, medical problems that we deal with mm -hmm. and there are times where alternative medicine, uh, complementary medicine can um, afford them pain relief that traditional medicine does not. Okay, great. So if a person wants to get some information about how to do a complementary medicine approach, uh, Dr. Rash, maybe you could take that one. Where would they start? Well, I think they, I mean, in my opinion, they would come and see a, um, a licensed naturopathic physician would be one place to start. And um, first and foremost, I would say that not every naturopath might have a tool that the patient might be looking for. An example might be acupuncture or 
yoga or what have mm -hmm. you, but um, but what I would say is that a licensed naturopath, especially in in, in this particular state, um, uh, I think has has good information regarding the efficacy of certain treatments that have been studied and know what's potentially safe. And they also can tell you potentially what are some interactions or some side effects and or how might that interact with their uh, conventional treatment. So okay. you want to find somebody who's qualified. Perfect. All right, and then Dr. Larson, do conventional medical providers or Western medicine providers, do they work a lot with naturopathic doctors? What's the relationship like there? It depends on what their underlying belief system is in regards to medicine. There yeah. are some physicians who only practice Western style medicine. They don't feel that complementary medicine has a role in treatment and other providers who are more open to alternative treatment and complementary treatment um, because it does help the patient with their symptoms okay. and quality of life. Okay, so for some people walking, watching right now, this might be the first time they've even ever heard of complementary or um, integrative medicine. Um, would you say it's safe? What would you tell people watching? Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I, <laughs> yes, I typically find that it's safe. Okay. Short and sweet? Yeah, you know, I would say that um, the misnomer that I, w I think I would want to clear up is that, is that people think that, there's, that if it's natural, that it has to be safe. And I would say um, they're, they're, that's probably not completely true, that we would still want to make sure that they're talking to a qualified health professional about their choices and what they're looking at. I mean, certainly there are some that are absolutely safe, but others, uh, we, they might need some more information from somebody, and okay. I would encourage them to either ask their naturopathic physician or their medical doctor. Okay, yeah. great, that's good advice. Um, we're almost out of time, but I think something else that people would be interested to know, health insurance, does it cover naturopathic medicine? That's growing, you know. I would say most private, th there's, uh, there, are some, uh, there are some laws in this state and also nationally that require uh, third-party payers to cover uh, this, this, this profession. I would also say, though, that uh, most federal plans, Medicare, Medicaid, does not. So it really depends on uh, the coverage and the state, et cetera, in which the person's practicing. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that. We do need to take a break. But we'll be right back to talk more about complementary medicine after these messages. Stay with us. Welcome back. Dr. Jay Larson and Dr. Jeff Rausch are staying with us to continue our discussion on complementary or integrative healthcare approaches. Thanks for sticking around. Yeah. So my first question is for you, Dr. Larson. We've been learning about complementary medicine, but could you give some examples of when people might use that healthcare approach? Well, for instance, uh, some women who have symptoms related to being postmenopausal need hormone replacement, but they don't do well with what we have available through prescriptions. And so often I'll refer them to somebody like Dr. Rausch to use uh, uh, supplements that are available to him. And he probably understands more about concentrations, delivery systems than I do because okay. they're not traditional prescriptions. Okay, and I think we've talked about some of the benefits of maybe using a complementary uh, healthcare approach if that's someone, something someone would like to do, but uh, let's be specific. Dr. Rausch, what would you say are the benefits to this kind of a healthcare approach? Well, I think, you know, to use the term holistic, I think that that would be a good term to define it. I mean, I think that it is a whole person approach because when, you know, if you look at, let's say, naturopathic medicine, I mean, we spend an inordinate amount of time talking about lifestyle, diet, exercise, stress management, and that would be well combined, in my opinion, with, let's say, a patient with heart disease who also needs medicines, mm -hmm. you know? So um, I, think it's, I think it's a much more rounded approach if, if if that could happen. Yeah. Okay, and then on the other side of that coin, risks. What are some of the risks that people should be aware of if they try to uh, seek out this sort of an approach? Well, from a lifestyle point of view, everything that Dr. Rauch does is great. The question is if they get a supplement that may have a drug interaction with one of the prescription medicines would be the main concern I would have. Okay, would you add anything? Uh, yeah, I highly agree with that. I mean, um, I, I would say that there are some um, herbal medicines in particular um, that could, you know, increase the 
um, effectiveness or decrease the effectiveness of certain medications. So, and that could put the patient at risk of side effects. So okay. I think that they need to speak with somebody who's licensed and has knowledge around that to know what those interactions might be. Okay, and we've talked a lot on this show about making sure that people are open and honest and can have conversations with their healthcare providers. But for something like this that's maybe um, not heard of or not as common, would you give advice to a patient who wants to approach their primary care physician or a medical doctor about maybe seeking out a complementary medicine healthcare approach? Well, I think it's reasonable for the patient to be able to inform their primary care provider Though, depending on the provider's point of view, they may be dissuaded not to do it. But the patient has their choices. They can find what works best for them. Okay, perfect. All right, so if um, I am a, doing a complementary medicine healthcare approach and something is wrong with me, may I feel sick or there's something physical, where do I start? What would you recommend? Who, which doctor do I go to first? Yeah, I mean, I would say you could, uh, it, Ideally, you'd be able to go to your, I would say your primary care doctor, you know, the person who has, who's overseeing the vast majority of your care. That would be the, I think, ideal person to know what's going on with your health care. Okay. But if you're working with a licensed provider, I would say you just need to be able to speak up and let somebody know that you're not feeling right. Okay, great. So Dr. Rush, are there co more common time types of complementary medicine that you practice or that people take advantage of compared to others? Well, there's definitely things that I do uh, that people take advantage of, as I mentioned, lifestyle approaches, um, herbal supplementation, um, hormone therapies, but there's things that I don't do as well that I think other people could take advantage of, things like mind-body medicine, yoga, meditation, Acupuncture is very popular. I don't do acupuncture, but that's certainly a very popular uh, treatment. Okay, and then Dr. Larson, are there complementary medicine approaches that you tend to um, recommend or suggest more often or other medical doctors in general kind of turn to as being pretty common? Um, I actually use a number of different therapies. I often recommend acupuncture for pain syndromes. Um, there is something called Bowen therapy in which uh, they work on the fascia. It's the connective tissue around the muscles. Sometimes it can be quite painful. Um, yeah. Okay. And so um, just we're, we're about running out of time here, but we have a couple more minutes. Um, if somebody is interested in this, if this is the first time they've heard of it or they've been thinking about it for a while, just in general, tips or advice that you would give to folks about thinking about balancing out Western medicine with some of that complementary medicine approaches? I just think that they, people are gonna need or would need to find a licensed healthcare provider um, or a qualified healthcare provider in that particular profession to seek guidance. Um, as a licensed provider, you're, you're bound just like any other provider would be and carrying a license usually means that you have education behind you as well. Okay, Dr. Rash, you've talked a little bit about prevention and lifestyle and that you do a lot with that with patients. So if someone doesn't have a sickness or isn't looking for a treatment, what would they come to you for as far as prevention goes? Yeah, so I like to kind of separate prevention into two different categories. Uh, screening prevention, which would be what people I think when they think of prevention are, are most educated around. That would be your screening exams for things like cancer, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I all, we do that, but the other thing we do is we talk a lot about prevention regarding lifestyle stuff. So I would say there's probably four, maybe four things that I really try to focus on. One would be nutrition. The second one would be activity or exercise. The third would be stress and stress management. And I guess the fourth one, which would probably be one of the most important things, would be sleep and making sure that people are getting adequate sleep. So we would be re reviewing what that might look like for the patient and how we could best address it because without that, their health would probably be compromised in some way. Okay, great, perfect. Thank you so much to both of you for being here with us this morning and all that great information. We are going to take a break, but coming up next, we've mentioned natural products and dietary supplements as a popular part of complementary medicine. We're going to dive a little bit deeper into those and what you need to know when adding these products to medications that you're already taking. Don't go away. We'll be right back after these messages.
Welcome back. The majority of adults in the United States take one or more dietary supplements at least occasionally, if not every day. Joining us now is Angela Woodmansey, a pharmacist with Mountain Pacific Quality Health, to talk about natural products such as dietary supplements and herbs and what people need to know about them, especially when it comes to taking them with medications. Angie, thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Beth. I'm happy to be here today. Oh, good. So let's just start by first just defining what are dietary supplements. Well, dietary supplements encompass a really broad group of products. It can be anything from vitamins, such as vitamin D or vitamin C, to minerals, which would be calcium or iron. It can also include herbal products, such as like echinacea or St. John's wort. It can include probiotics, which are a type of good bacteria, and even amino acids, which can be used in like bodybuilding supplements. So it's really a broad category. Okay, so when we talk about dietary supplements then, what can they do to either maintain or improve your health? Well, a dietary supplements can be taken to try to help um, improve any sort of deficiencies you might have in like your vitamin status, let's say. So let's say you have a low calcium diet, you may be needing to take a calcium supplement. Okay. Or if you live in Montana where it's cold and wintry and you don't see a lot of sun in the winter months, you may not be producing enough vitamin D, so your healthcare provider might recommend you take a vitamin D supplement. Some people do, however, take supplements for other reasons. They might take them to try to help improve their health or help reduce their risk for diseases. And uh, categories uh, or products in that category might be things such as herbal products or omega-3 fish oils, et cetera. Okay. And it's, imp it's important to know that um, while these supplements can be helpful, you do need to use caution with them. Some of them can cause harm. Okay, so let's talk about that a little bit. As a, as a pharmacist, what would you tell somebody who might be interested in taking a supplement or some other kind of natural product? The most important thing to remember is that dietary supplements are not FDA approved. The FDA is the Food and Drug Administration, and that's who regulates prescription drugs. And so you need to know that dietary supplements are not studied for safety, for effectiveness, for drug interactions, for um, even the purity of the product. And so a lot of times you don't quite know what you're going to get. So if I read the label, can I trust what's on their label? That can be tricky, um, especially in regards to like effectiveness. Um, you know, you'll look at all these bottles on the shelf and you'll see they have claims on them. They might say helps boost your immune system or helps your digestive system. But if you read in fine print, there's always a little asterisk and you follow it down to the bottom of the bottle and in fine print, there's a cautionary statement. And if you don't mind, Beth, I brought um, that. I would like to read for you what you'll see on most dietary supplements. Sure, that'd be great. It'll say, these statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. And so when you see that, that can be super confusing. You're like, wait a minute, I thought this might help me, but it's saying it hasn't really been studied. How do I know? My best advice is to talk to your healthcare provider, talk to your pharmacist. They can go over the clinical studies that are out there. Um, there are some common products that have been used for a long time, and there is quite a bit of data on them showing that they can be somewhat effective. But there are other products out there that have little to no data on them at all. And so it's very important that you, you talk to them to try to sort that out. Okay, so what about warnings um, and side effects that may not necessarily be on the bottle? Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, um, safety can be a big concern with these types of products. You know, I think a big misnomer is a lot of people think if something is natural, then it has to be safe. But that's not always true. I mean, look at like mushrooms, for instance, in the, on the, in the forest. You might find a mushroom and it might be great and healthy for you, um, but another mushroom could be poisonous. So just because something is plant derived does not necessarily mean that it's completely safe. So you have to consider that. There can be um, side effects with a lot of natural products. They can be mild anywhere from dizziness to drowsiness to more severe from um, like heart arrhythmias to increased risk for bleeding to liver disease or um, even kidney failure or death. So um, you really need to talk to your healthcare providers, talk to your pharmacist, become educated so you know what you're taking. Okay, that's great advice. And so what about the quality of these products? There's so many different options out there. How do I know if I'm getting the best quality? Yeah, that can be super confusing. Like for instance, with vitamin D, if you look on a shelf, you might find eight different products out there. And you're like, well, which one's the best? Mm -hmm. My advice as a pharmacist is to look for certain marks on the bottle. And those marks can help you know that that product has been tested by a third party to ensure purity of the product. So you wanna look for symbols such as USP, 
or NSF or Consumer Lab. And if you see that, that at least gives you the assurance that the product you're taking is pure and what's in the bottle is what's on the label. Because okay. um, you'd be surprised. There are some products that you really don't know what you're taking. Um, so that's really important to, to look at. Okay, so it sounds like there are potentially a lot of risks when it comes to taking these supplements. So what's your advice there, Angie? How can I help reduce my risks if I decide to take something like this? Well, you know, um, as I said, there can be good and bad with them, but it's super important, as I've said over and over again, talk to your healthcare provider, and that means all of them. Talk to your doctor, your chiropractor, your dentist. Tell them that you're on these products. Talk to your pharmacist. Your pharmacist can really help you look at any drug interactions that might be out there, um, because they do exist. You can have drug interactions with your prescription drugs or over-the-counter drugs or even with other natural products. So you want to do that. Um, also, it's important not to self-diagnose. You know, you might be walking by and see something that says, this product boosts your mood. You might find that on an herbal product called St. John's Wort. Um, but you don't want to self-diagnose yourself as necessarily having depression. You would want to talk to your healthcare provider, get an accurate diagnosis, ask them if they think this might be a good option for you first. Um, and that's important because St. John's Wort can have drug interactions. Okay. And so you do want to be um, aware of those. Okay. Great. So just really quickly, we're about out of time, but I know a really common supplement is a probiotic. Can you just briefly talk about what that is and whether or not they're safe? Absolutely. Um, probiotics are known as good bacteria and sometimes good yeast. Um, our digestive system is composed of good and bad bacteria, and it's a fine balance. And if you go on antibiotics, for example, um, it can wipe out all of your good bacteria and you're only left with the bad bacteria. So a lot of healthcare providers will recommend probiotics to help get things back into balance. Okay, perfect. All right, Angie, thank you so much. We're out of time, but I really appreciate your time and all that great information. And I'd like to thank Dr. Larson and Dr. Rausch for also being here today. And thank you so much for joining us. We hope we'll see you again next week. Until then, stay fit, stay well, and stay healthy for life with Healthy Living for Life. Have a great week. Healthy Living for Life is brought to you by Mountain Pacific Quality Health. We'd love to hear from you. If you have suggestions for future programs, visit our website at mpqhf.org or call us at 406-443-4020. You can also catch us on YouTube by visiting our website and clicking on the YouTube icon. Special thanks to Fire Tower Coffee House and Roasters. Production facilities provided by Video Express Productions.